with Noah Beery as Dr. Heinrich Mueller. Calling all cars, attention all cars. Calling all Contra Costa County Sheriff's cars. Broadcast 49, a murder in Walnut Canyon. Stand by for description of suspects. California City, two police officers in a patrol car are puzzled by the erratic actions of a big sedan traveling ahead of them. That big car up ahead's acting mighty suspicious. Slowing down at a couple of gas stations like he was going in. Yeah, that is funny. He always turns back on the road real quick and then speeds away. You suppose it could be that gang who's been holding up gas stations? Well, it sure looks queer to me. Hey, there he goes. Into a station. Come on. If the mud tries to stick up, we'll catch him red handed. Get your gun out. And fill her up with crack, and you'd better let me have a couple of quarts of Sinclair, Pennsylvania motor oil. Hey, hey, don't shoot. Uh, what's the matter? What have I done? Well, now that I see who it is, uh, I guess it's a false alarm. But I sure thought I was going to stop a gas station robbery. You've been driving in and out of every station for the past mile. And I figured you were looking for one to stick up. <laughs> well, that is funny. As a matter of fact, I've been looking for a station and so Rio Grande cracked gasoline. I won't use anything else in my car. Hey, hey there, uh, wait a minute. What kind of oil is that you're giving me? Why, Pennsylvania oil, sir. Well, I want Sinclair Pennsylvania oil in cans. I don't like to buy oil in bulk. I'd like to know what I'm getting. Open a can of uh, Sinclair Pennsylvania, will you? Yes, sir. By the way, uh, what do you officers know about this murder in Walnut Creek? Oh, you mean that sandwich guy that comes off? Tonight, Calling All Cars is honored to have as its guest the oldest sheriff in point of service in the United States. Sheriff R. R. Veal of Contra Costa County, California has worn his badge of office for 40 consecutive years. It is with great pleasure that we introduce Sheriff Beale from San Francisco. In a few seconds, you will hear the Dean of American Peace Officers, Sheriff Beale. to an understanding 
of your peace officer's problem. We whose lives are devoted to keeping the peace are very grateful. And now, on with the show. the deep shadows are pushed aside by a twinkling beam of light. In his isolated laboratory, Dr. Heinrich Bühler is working late. The Mexican watchman, making his rounds with his little dog, peers through the window, sees the doctor's huge frame bent low over his retort, and hears the doctor humming an old German to 
those mountains of the second coming, they couldn't buy you a ticket to heaven. Eh, Buddha Thomas? <laughs> Perhaps you were a sinner. And what the little dog smelled was your flesh roasty in hell. Eh, Buddha Thomas? <laughs> yeah. Well, no matter. You are dead. No one will ever miss you. <laughs> you did no good in the world anyway. While I, Dr. Heinrich Muller, I must go on to right over. Uh, but uh, our next work isn't over yet, Mr. Thomas. Now, you must, you must come along with me. That's it. Just a little way. Little far. Now, uh, just across the room, that way. Uh, there. Uh, now, this will be fine. <laughs> but now you see, when they find the blackened tinder, you soon will be. They will see that I, the poor doctor, have been burned, bending over my chest tubes while I was concluding my great experiment. You see, Bruder Thomas, I have told everyone what dangerous explosives I use in my work. <laughs> Now, uh, here are the 98 cents I have already shown to Pedro. These go in your right hand, trousers, pocket. And there, there now is my watch. <laughs> Pedro will recognize that, too. <laughs> Mm, I hate to let you have that, Buddha Thomas. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think I can get another one somewhere with the $200,000 worth of insurance which my wife will collect after my... Oh, pardon me, Buddha Thomas. I mean, your body is discovered. Yeah. You look convincing enough to me. Dressed in my clothes, with my 98 cents on my watch in your pocket? Oh, you would almost pass for me as it is. Ah, but after you have been cremated, then, then, my little friend, you will be perfect. You stunned your turn. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, I nearly forgot one thing. One little fatal thing. You have all your teeth, Brother Thomas. While I, unfortunately, am minus my left canine. Oh, now that would have been an error. But that's quickly rectified. Oh, this chisel on hammer will do the trick in just one second. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's perfect. <laughs> now with your left canine molar missing... There can be no doubt that you are the unfortunate late Dr. Heinrich Muller. And I will carry this little tooth of yours with me always, Brother Thomas, as my last souvenir of you, of you my good friend. <laughs> 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 Ha! <laughs> 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 
large gills of walnut cannon are lit with a pouring flame to stop the Heinrich Miller's laboratory. Pedro, the watchman, just retiring in his cabin a quarter mile away, is attracted by the explosion. He calls the fire department, and grabbing an extinguisher, rushes up the hill to fight the flames himself. With the assistance of the fire department, the blaze is put out before the laboratory is completely destroyed. But when the charred body is discovered on the laboratory floor, that of R.R. Beal of Contra Costa County is notified. He arrives on the scene with his son, Under Sheriff W.M. Beal, just after the doctor's wife. When the soldier Senor is there, you are the sheriff? Yes, what's the trouble? Well, there was a fire, and when the fire she is out, we find it body. Whose place is this? This is the laboratory of the doctor Muller. And who is the dead man? He is the doctor Muller. How do you know? Madre Dios, the word for him. I talked to him just a half hour ago. Bill. Yes, sir. Go on to the corner and take a look around. Oh, okay. Who's this woman? That is Senora Muno. Oh, I see. I beg pardon, ma'am. I'm the sheriff. Is this your husband? Have you any idea how this happened? He's working on a new formula. The chemicals are explosive. Something must have gone wrong. Oh, I see. Oh, he was the best man in the world. A great scientist and a perfect husband. Of course. Well, will you send for the undertaker, Sheriff? Oh, it was so horrible. I never did. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am, but we must wait for the coroner to arrive. The coroner? Why? He's dead. He was killed in his own laboratory. Yeah, but he's dead violently, and in all such cases, the coroner must investigate the scene before the body is removed. Does that mean there must be an inquest? Yes. Oh, but sure, that's so unnecessary. I'm sorry, but it's the law. Very well. But won't you please get it over with just as soon as possible? Oh, I can't stand much worse. Yes, ma'am, we certainly will. No, I suggest that you go home and try to get some rest. Rest? Rest? What do you think I can get any rest tonight? Well, still, it would be more sensible than standing around here in the chill air. Please do, ma'am. There's nothing more you can do here. Very well. I'll go. That's right. We'll let you know when the inquest is to be. All right, sure. Good night. Good night. You get rid of it, Dad? Yes, why? I uh, found some things that don't look right. What? Well, this, for instance. A half-burned Bible. It was in the wastebasket. Well? Well, Muller was a scientist. He never had a reputation for being particularly religious. Yeah, so I've heard. And the inscription in the flyleaf of this Bible reads, Brother Thomas Harwood, Holy City, California. Holy City? That's the religious colony down near Santa Cruz, isn't it? That's right. Let's ask that watchman about this thing. Hey, you. He's in North. You know a man by the name of Thomas Harwood? Thomas Harwood? Mm. Why, there was a man in the doctor called Brother Thomas. He, he worked here for a while. You know anything about him? No, only he was a very religious man. He was like a saint. Where is he now? I have not seen him for one, two days now. Thanks, that's all for a minute. But don't go away. Oh, no, senor. I see right here. I found something else, Dad. What? Blood on an unburned board in the floor of the locker. Yes? Uh, it was dry. Probably a day or two old. I've chipped off a piece of the board. Good. You better beat it back to the office and analyze it right well, away. That's just what I'm going to do. There's something about this whole thing that just doesn't seem right to me. Under Sheriff Beale works long into the night, examining the sample of blood-stained wood. The next morning, he reports to his father. Well, Bill, what did you find? Uh, it's human blood, Dad, and it's at least two days old. Then we have a murder case on our hands. Right. And the absence of his brother Harwood looks mighty significant. Still, the watchman Pedro has a convincing story. With no proof. Harwood and Pedro may be Confederates in the crime. Well, you better check back on Miller's movements for the past few days and also take Pedro over to Berkeley and question him on Chief Balmer's lie detector. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Thompson, uh, see you. What does he want? I see Mr. Miller's return. Oh, very well. Send him in. Okay, Bill, you better get Yeah, started. right away, Good morning, sir. What can I do for you? I'm as new as attorney. Thompson's the name. Well, I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. Won't you sit down? Thank you. No, what is it? Sheriff, my client is extremely upset about this whole thing. That's right. He wants to get it over with as quickly as possible, and I've come to see you to find out how soon the inquest can be held so she can dispose of the body. Well, I can't tell you that, Mr. Thompson. Why not? The Mueller met his death through an accidental explosion of chemicals. It's quite evident. And there are some extenuating circumstances about this case that requires an autopsy. An autopsy? Why? Anyone can see that the man was burned to death. It was clearly accidental. It was not accidental, Mr. Thompson, and the man was not burned to death. He was murdered. Under the direction of Under Sheriff Beale, officers investigate Dr. Miller's movements for the past week. While the Under Sheriff places Pedro.
Bureau and the lie detector of Berkeley Police Headquarters. One hour later, the young man reports to his dad. Well, Dad, I've had Pedro on the lie machine, and I, I believe he's telling the truth. Which proves what? Well, it proves him innocent. He's convinced that he talked to Dr. Mueller last night. Dr. Mueller showed him his watch, and Pedro described the watch, and the worn-out fog. Dr. Mueller showed him 98 cents and said that was all the money he had in the world. And we found the watch and the 98 cents on the victim. Right. Now, I'm convinced that Pedro had nothing to do with it. I'm ready to eliminate him and start searching for this brother Harwood. Oh, good morning, Dr. Lee. Uh, good morning, Sheriff. Well, I've completed my autopsy. Good. What did you find? The victim met his death by hemorrhage of the brain, caused by three heavy blows in the skull by some blunt instrument. How long ago were these blows struck? And the man has been dead two days. Yeah, but Pedro the Watchman claims he'd seen Dr. Mueller last night at 9 o'clock. Bill, I don't think the victim is Dr. Mueller. What? There's very great room for doubt. According to the statement of Mr. and Mrs. Carter, with whom the doctor had dinner last night, he ate spinach, beans, coffee, and pie. Yes, that's right. And I examined the contents of his stomach, and I found no traces of any of these foods. But Mrs. Mueller positively identified the body this morning. She pointed out that her husband had his left canine tooth missing. Well, now, wait a minute. The left canine tooth of the victim was knocked out after death. Well, I'll be a truck I'd turn to you. And furthermore, I've examined some of the unburned portions of the victim's clothing. They were soaked in inflammable chemicals. Mm, murders, men made into a torch. Yeah. Right. Now we've got to start all over again. Look here, Dr. Leach. I don't doubt your word, but we've got to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that the victim is not Dr. Mueller. Is there any portion of the victim's body that isn't burned beyond recognition? Well, yes, the right side of his face lay on the floor. Uh, any hair on it? Yes, some on the temples. Fine. What are you going to do, Bill? I'm going to get some of the combings out of Dr. Mueller's hairbrush and ask Schneider over at the university to compare them. That'll give us another check. Under Sheriff Beal manages to procure some of Mueller's hair from his military brushes and also to obtain a picture of a man. Albert Schneider, criminologist at the University of California, examines the hair and finds the combings are different from the victim's hair. <laughs> The unburned ear of the victim is compared with Mueller's ear on the photograph and found to be dissimilar. <laughs> Through the aid of the San Francisco examiner, a dentist is found who had done work on Dr. Mueller's teeth. He examines the corpse and finds that the body is not that of Mueller. <laughs> Police now send their search for Harwood. An undertaker in Placerville is located who identifies the murder victim as Harwood himself. Friendless, itinerant laborer, and religious fanatic. $1,000 reward. Arrest and hold one Dr. Heinrich Mueller, wanted for murder. 36 years old, height 6 feet 1 inch, weight 200 pounds. Mueller is wanted for the murder of Thomas Harwood in his laboratory at Walnut Creek, Contra Costa County, California, on Thursday, July 30th, 1925, at 9 p.m. Mueller was heavily insured for the benefit of his life. $1,000 $1,000 reward would be paid for the arrest and delivery of Heinrich Mueller to me at any place in the world. Arrest, hold, and wire at my expense. I hold warrant for murder. While descriptions of Miller are sent to every police station in the world, while police are watching all railroad and bus terminals, steam ships, docks, airports, and highways, while customs officers are scanning each person who crosses the Canadian and Mexican borders, Newspapers all over the country are prominently featuring Miller's picture and description and asking their readers to look for him. But ten days pass and no trace is discovered of the fugitives. Public interest runs high and the manhunt is the subject of conversation everywhere. So it's no wonder that as Mr. and Mrs. Stanford, owners of an apartment house in Oakland, are winding up an evening of bridge with the couple next door that the conversation turns to the crime. Well, I think it's just terrible that the police haven't done anything about it. Done anything about it? Why, darling, you don't realize what a swell job we've done already. I was talking to my friend Ralph Pigeon. Uh, you know him, Eddie. He's a patrolman on the Berkeley Force. Sure, I know Ralph. Why, uh, Ralph tells me that if it hadn't been for Sheriff Veal insisting on an autopsy, we would have buried that poor Harwood thinking he was Mueller. Yeah, Mrs. Mueller was anxious to get the thing over with. Sure looked like an accident. Well, how did they know Dr. Mueller did it? Looks like he did it all right. He skipped town. They found he'd drawn $900 out of the bank the morning of the murder. Yeah, and he had himself insured for 200 grand. And him an intelligent man, too, with an education and all. This don't seem possible that a fellow like that would do such a thing. 
Have you seen a picture of them, Stella? Oh, land sakes, no. I've been so busy getting these apartments redecorated, I ain't seen the paper for two weeks. All I know is what Joe tells me. No, uh, if you ever get a look at the guy's picture, you think you could do it. Yeah? I'd like to get a look at his picture. Well, it must be around here someplace. Uh, what is that last thing he's open for you? Oh, it's right there by the Davenport. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, there you are, Stella. Uh, look at that picture. Certainly does look cruel. Mm-hmm. Why, Joe! Huh? Oh, what? Why, he's a dead image for Captain Spangler. What? Yes, look. Now put your hand over the lower half of the picture. See? The eyes are the same. Who's Captain Spangler? Oh, you know, that mining engineer from Mexico. He's always taken an apartment with us here every time he's been north in the last two years. Oh, yeah? Is he back? Yeah. yeah. I came in town a week ago Thursday. Thursday. Oh, wait a minute. Mueller committed this murder Thursday night. The Captain Spangler's been acting mighty queer. Never acted like it before. I tried to talk to him yesterday about the murder. He walked right by me. He's rude about it. Said he didn't know nothing about murders and didn't want to. And a couple of days ago, when I went up to clean the apartment, he yelled at me to go away and leave him alone. Well, sure looks like this picture. Hey, you better call the police. Oh, but what if Captain Spangler isn't Dr. Mueller, but is really Captain Spangler? Why, they might sue us. Yeah, and if Captain Spangler is Dr. Mueller, you can go to the pen for harboring a fugitive. I'm going to call up Ralph Pigeon right away. Within a half an hour, a posse of police under the command of Captain C.D. Lee arrives at the apartment house. Captain Lee deploys his men around the building, covering every exit. Then he approaches the door of apartment number seven, where Captain Spangler is seated. I can hear someone moving around in there. Hit it again. Open up, Mueller. Officers of the law, I have a warrant for your arrest for murder. Crime 
crime does not pay. A particular crime that does not pay is the practice in some service stations of substituting a cheap bulk motor oil when you call for a well-known brand. Inspectors continually catch and find these offenders, yet thousands of motorists are robbed daily by this trickery. Your protection is to look for a Sinclair dealer because he sells Sinclair motor oils in tamper-proof cans and only in cans. And you can get Sinclair oils wherever Rio Grande cracked gasoline is sold. Calling All Cars is written and produced by William N. Lopeson. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for the Rio Grande Oil Company. of the Rio Grande Oil Company. Welcome to the police calling all cars, attention all cars.